Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online episode review. This one's going to be for episode 2, which I believe is called uh, GGO, Gun Gale Online. And I suppose this is the introduction episode I was sort of uh, expecting for this episode, but in a way it's also, I think, the probably what the first episode should have been. I enjoyed the first episode, um, but I think... I enjoyed it because I sort of had the context already from reading the manga as to basically what this episode covered, whereas I think anime only watchers, it, I think it was a little bit of a weird one to, I think, give you so much of the squad jam just jumping straight in and then gives the background behind it. I, I think the way the manga worked, I think structure, structurally it works better, where what the manga did was that they they opened up with a, a kind of quick little scene. They basically opened up with the scene of her doing that really cool sequence where she takes out the, the kind of team of combat veterans and basically the last couple of minutes of, um, the last minute basically of the last episode um, and then cut back to basically what this episode covers and then we kind of gradually catch up with what that initial scene was about. Um, I think that would have worked a little bit uh, better than this, not to say that this was bad or anything like that, but it's a weird one where like, when you already have one of the source materials doing it in that way, why did you kind of, uh, with the anime, structure it so differently? Did they feel like they needed to start off with a ton of action? And maybe just like, okay, we'll do this action first, then get people up to date with maybe not as action focused episode. Um, Again, it doesn't matter too much. We still are getting the two episodes. I think the order maybe just should have been reversed a little bit. But um, what happens in this episode is pretty good. We obviously get introduced to who Len is in real life, who is Karen. And of course, as I talked about in the previous video, the, the whole idea of her character, why she's playing this game, why it's so important to her is that um, in the real world, she's extremely tall, and because of that, is sort of like a little bit of an outcast, doesn't really have many friends. Uh, she's kind of living in this new place where she's going to, like, university, and hasn't really fit in just yet. Um, she goes to one of her, I suppose, older friends, who's like a video game kind of uh, player, and asks how to get into virtual reality games because she hears about them on the, the news and this idea that you are basically in a whole other world, basically. You get to kind of... Uh, you know, start again basically every time you play a new game and she likes this because I suppose she really wants to have a very different sort of life than the one she actually has in the game a bit of an escape obviously and um, so I think that is the basic like setup like it's simple the idea of just she's tall in real life because of that she's an outcast she wants to just kind of be the small cute girl in the game you know it's it's simple but I think they add more to it in this episode once you realize that she actually like properly gets into the game. It's not just about like being different. She actually begins to enjoy the game when she forms the friendship with Pito Hui later on in the episode. We can see that there's kind of more to it. And they, I, I suppose they're setting up that they're going to get into the idea of like when they maybe be, when she maybe begins to meet up with people in real life and kind of see that. Yes, the game is an escape, but she can also accept who she is in the, the real world as well. Um, that it's not all just about you know, escaping, basically. Um, you know, that, that sort of thing, I, I think, is probably where they're going to go. And that she's very afraid of this kind of, in a way, um, uh, mission that kind of Pito he gives her to, you know, one day if you beat me then we'll meet up in the real world and we, we'll see what each other is actually like. Um, I, I definitely got the impression from reading the manga, I, I get the impression that probably next episode is going to give the first hints of it um, uh, in the anime, but that Pito Hui is... is I, I almost, like the theory I suppose I'm having right now is that Pito Hui in real life probably is um, Len's favorite singer, the one that, the, that she mentions. Um, because they mention stuff like the, the concerts and stuff like that. Uh, already here you're getting the idea that she's kind of rich in the game uh, and uses a different gun every single time. Um, she obviously mentions that she is a female player, obviously. Um, and that you know they only, in the game, can meet up when their schedules sort of align. 
Um, so I suppose we're going to get into that in the next couple of episodes, but um, that's I suppose where I'm leaning to right now. I suppose maybe just including a little bit of manga information that I have, but I think it is stuff that will be covered in the next episode of the anime, because it's called like fan letter, of course. Um, but yeah, like uh, getting, I suppose, Len's introduction to kind of the MMOs, um, VR MMOs, was really cool because I like that she actually just got the system and bought Alfheim Online first. And you kind of think like, okay, okay, that makes sense. That's sort of like the new go-to game uh, with SAO kind of out of the picture. Um, and to see her just jump in and she's a tall avatar and she just doesn't like the game uh, overall. And then every single other game that she tries her avatar is kind of already, you know, just this kind of uh, like really tall or it's not something she really wants. She wants to make sure that she's a, a more normal kind of looking character. So she kind of has to find a game where the avatars are human, but that it's not going to immediately give her one that's like identical to her in their actual real world. Um, and so she basically, the, the gimmick of this show is basically that in GGO, she ends up getting a avatar that is the complete opposite of kind of uh, her in that she's tall in real life, but she's super, she got a super short avatar in, in uh, GGO and she's very happy with it. Um, and then after that, it, it's kind of showing her actually beginning to start playing the game. Uh, I like that when she's asked, you know, like, why did you come here by the, the kind of tutorial person? She just says, you know, I just wanted to be a cute girl like that. The actual gameplay aspect of the games was was something that never really um, stood out to her all that much. It was just the idea of being someone else, basically, for a while. But she begins to get into it, you know, when she learns how to shoot the guns. They explain to you some of the game mechanics in a, in a bit better of a way than they do in, like, G the GGO arc for SAO. Um, of, like, here's the difference between optical guns and in live ammo guns. We didn't really see much use of optical guns in GGO because it was completely focused more or less on the um, the PvP stuff. Whereas here we actually initially get to see Len do some of the PvE uh, stuff basically. Uh, where she's using optical guns to take out monsters, you know, hiding in the desert. She says that she took out the small uh, animals and uh, she ran from the big ones. She consulted like strategy guides to learn how to take out the boss monsters, which is really cool. It makes sense. That's you know how you know video gamers kind of work. And um, so it was it was cool to see that just the mention of like a strategy guide and her very carefully taking out the monster in a very specific way. Even just that okay, like GGO, it's a uh, like its story, its world is post-apocalyptic and it has like alien monsters as well as normal animals in it as well uh, and that that's the explanation for why it's um it's not just you know like complete reality fighting soldiers that there are actually these you know monsters in the game that we didn't really get much of that um i i still think over the course of the series we're not really going to delve into like if there's any sort of lore or story behind much of what's going on um, part of that is because I don't really feel that this is the sort of show that's going to go overly in depth into, you know, I suppose the the more real world um, kind of sci-fi technology stuff that SAO does with, um, you know, that exploring heavy stuff like AI, you know, being trapped inside of a game uh, and then the stuff that's obviously going to happen in allyization being even more kind of technical on that front. Uh, this very much seems like it's going to be a story of just people playing the game. I think we're going to get to, you know, that there will be, you know, stuff that happens in the real world and like real world friendships, but it will be based around them as like a group of friends or something like that, playing the game to become as best as they can, which I actually am really looking forward to in this series because it feels like in a way we're not going to have to worry about kind of, um, real world craziness having an overly crazy impact on the game that the game can remain a game here of course the characters they're still not going to want to like die lose be taken out in the middle of a match or something like that but this the stakes not being like that high immediately means that like we can sort of do something different here like stuff like her mentioning that in the early days of her playing the game she died a lot before she um you know, found the ability to change the color of her clothes and her weapons, and 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 I like how they still basically say 
she's still a beginner at the game, but she sort of came across this um this group of situations where she could be this amazing player in this specific situation. Her colour clothing and the, the place that she ended up hunting a lot ended up being perfect camouflage in this like basically pink sand desert. Her pink clothing makes her more or less invisible because she already is so small and she colours her guns in the exact same way. So it's just a case of she perfectly suits that environment and even veteran players as they sort of hint at um, couldn't see her and they say that like her speciality is with submachine guns. She uses that and it manages to take people out and gains a bit of a reputation for herself among I suppose players who go to that specific area of the game as being you know the pink devil and that's how Pito Hui kind of comes across her so I, I like that and just like the simple thing of like a really high-end player like Pito Hui immediately finding her and just gun to the head she's found her the camouflage hasn't worked showing you that like um, Len still has a very long way to go before she can become a pro and then you, you sort of remember still from the first episode and just like oh yeah in these like other situations where she's not completely in cover she sort of tends to panic a little bit when she can't get the drop on people herself and she's going to get used to having to I suppose um, more more readily like dodge live fire and like be the decoy be the rabbit in a way um, so they're setting it up I think quite well. The simple thing of just their friendship sort of forming just because you know there's not a ton of female players in the game and you know they kind of see something in each other. Uh, Peter Wee sort of takes her under her wing to kind of make her a better player and that's really shown when you know the kind of trademark gun Pichan. Uh, Peter Wee is the one who sort of uh, guides Lan to finding this gun in the first place um, and that's when I suppose the, the main I suppose big core of what's happening here comes into play the idea of like one day when you're strong enough to actually beat me in the game then we'll meet in real life like they form this friendship in the game but they've already more or less said to each other that both won't expect um, the other to kind of be the way they actually are in real life so that's a fun setup and then obviously how she's going to train to get to that point is by entering these tournaments and that's when the squad jam comes into play and we more or less saw most of the squad jam actually take place um, I there's still a little bit left from what I read of the manga in that obviously we have to have um, Peter Hui introduce uh, Len to M the introduction of M has to happen him training giving uh, giving Len some uh, training before the squad jam and I suppose they're going to probably show the just the direct start of the the squad jam itself but I think they've more or less already done that so uh, I'm very interested to see if they just kind of skip past that like they introduce us to M maybe there's a little bit of interaction between M and Len and then they just skip to like okay end of episode one we more or less cover the end of the squad jam let's see where we go from here um, so definitely the, the formatting of the episodes I think is the only kind of like hmm, why did they choose to do them in this order? That's the only, I think, questionable thing so far. Otherwise, like, I think animation's great, um, the voice acting and how they're doing, like, the character stuff seems very good. Good world building on GGO in itself. Um, other than that, I think it's just, it's maybe, it's, it's a little light on, I suppose, plot and character stuff right now. But I think there's potential once they kind of jump into, I suppose, what will end up being like the the main squad jam like this was kind of just M and I suppose Len making a name for themselves and then we're going to jump into like the next squad jam where we actually get introduced to like that high-end teams when we're getting into the really big competitions um, and I think after that I'm just kind of wondering like what the the overall format of the series is going to be obviously you have this promise as the main like sort of character motivation type thing become stronger eventually to beat Pito He so is it going to be a situation where they both just end up entering the squad jam on like opposing teams or do we get to the next uh, bull of the bullet tournaments and they have to enter it solo and that's when it comes down to the two of them and um, I, I would hope actually that it does lead up to the next bullet of bullets because it would be cool if they at some point did something where like we maybe got to a crossover point where like we maybe saw a Xenon or someone like that uh, 
kind of come into play as well. Some of the, I suppose, veteran players that we know from previous experience in GGO, um, that would be actually really fun to see. But I don't know if they do that just because I think they do want to keep the the side aspect of this in play where it's just these characters. But obviously much later down the line, I think that's maybe where it will end up going to set up a bullet of bullets. But if they're going to stick to the squad jam format, I don't really mind that too much. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, you know, second episode, very, very positive start. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the next episode. But uh, yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this episode. But uh, thanks for watching this video and bye.